Hello and welcome to this review of my Cherry G84 4100 PPAGB. It's from 2002, making it one of my more modern boards, but still it's not exactly made yesterday. I got this at the recycling center not too long ago, where I paid 50p for it, and it was in nearly mint condition, with no real signs of use at all, and absolutely no dust in it. There was just one problem though, the previous owner had put a very ugly, immensely huge sticker on the back and removing it and its sticky residue came at the cost of damaging the ink on the sticker somewhat, unfortunately. Which, now that we're on it, shows the model and serial numbers as well as that it was made in the Czech Republic. It's a very compact keyboard, not even that much bigger than a DVD case, and slightly thinner actually. This is known as a 75% layout, which is essentially a 60% with F keys, as well as a nav cluster, which is jammed into a one unit row on the right, and they take up the spot of the Windows keys, which appear to be conspicuously absent, by the way. Absolutely useless for my purposes, and my work actually suffers noticeably from it, but I know other people that find these layouts, or even smaller ones, highly appealing. Some of the keys are layered into the keyboard with this FN key here that unfortunately includes the F12 button, which is here, and they also included a layered numpad here. Now, of course, it's nice that they tried to incorporate a numpad into the keyboard, but it's fecking useless. The staggered formation kind of takes away the point of having a numpad in the first place because it feels very unnatural to have the keys like that. And the calculator keys are also present, but they're in different positions. Instead of having them from the top to the right, they're all on the right and they're in the wrong order. They're in times divide plus and minus instead of divide times minus and plus. So it's almost as if they were deliberately trying to make it unusable. Now I know that a lot of people really like small form factors and many would even consider this to be on the large side, but for my work I need the numpad constantly, so a layout like this is barely usable for me. Now Cherry obviously really tried to keep this keyboard as small and light as possible. The keyboard uses low profile switches to keep the height down and the caps are light and not very tall. In fact, they're not even a full unit in dimension. They're slightly smaller, and some of the keys, like the arrow keys, are even smaller than that. Which takes some time to get used to, by the way. You'll be making a few mistakes when you first start using it, probably. Or at least I did, but after the usual week, it's mostly okay now. Despite the very light weight and the small size of the keyboard though, it's not as easy to push around as you might think because it has rubber non-slip pads on the feet, a typical Cherry thing that I think is a very nice and clever move. The switches are Cherry ML and they're the normal low profile version. They also use an increased height version of this switch that they market as the robust version. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two switches. The robust one is on the right, it's a bit taller. And interestingly, they both use a three pin pinout on the back and a one pin on the front. They're tactile with a 50 gram bump and they're rated at 20 million operations, which is fairly typical for electromechanical switches. What is unusual is that unlike the vast majority of switches which actuate before the tactile bump, this one actually actuates much further down than that. You can easily bump them up and down and they don't register. So you have to almost bottom out a bit more like this. Furthermore, because the tactility is so unrelated from the actuation, these switches have no hysteresis. The key feel is fairly rough and you can clearly hear the friction. They have an unpleasant, dry and raspy sound to them, which I'm going to attempt to capture for you here. Uncharacteristically for Cherry, they bind quite badly on off-center key presses, but to be honest, I never really seem to hit them off-center. The tactility is very unclean and bumpy, like going over a cobblestone road, very similar to MX Brown, but not as good. However, it's not exactly fair to compare them to a full-size switch like Cherry MX, because those switches are much bigger, so they have much more space to work with. So if you compare these to MX Brown, yeah, of course they feel shit. Naturally, these switches were made for low-profile keyboards, though, something MX switches can't and indeed weren't designed to do, so it's much more relevant to compare them to something like scissor switches. 
Take, for example, this Apple aluminium keyboard, possibly the most prolific modern scissor switch keyboard nowadays. The key feel on this is, in my opinion, a bit nicer, with snappier, cleaner tactility and no scratchiness. However, they have very short travel, which is a major problem. Because after typing on these for just a short while, my fingertips actually start to hurt. And although the ML switch is a bit scratchy, they retain admirably long travel for their size, as much as three millimeters, almost as much as a full size switch. So all in all, for a small switch, they're not that bad really, but don't think that this can compare favorably with a full size switch because it really has no advantages as far as I'm concerned. The keycaps have a unique mount and they're pad printed. But the printing is extremely flat and rimless, making it look just like double shots, including the nice, bold, chunky lettering, so that's pretty good. They're made out of thin ABS, just like it says on the inside of the keycap, but they're all still virgin white, fortunately. Nice. It has a tiny spacebar, just five units, but it, and in fact all the other large keys, are stabilized very nicely. Works quite well. Overall, this is an okay small out keyboard. The 75% isn't that much bigger than 60% and you still get a full nav cluster, even if the nav buttons are all in the wrong places. It's nice to have them. It's not the highest quality and the switches aren't very good, but as far as low profile small keyboards go, it's all right, nothing to write home about, but better than most low travel keyboards. Just don't compare them with full size switches because they would lose out to almost everything else. But as long as you don't do that, it's passable. That's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And here is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.